Welcome to the last video of the Harbinger Special. In the first video, we looked into the stories of the potential 11 Harbingers. And in the second, we examined the goal of the Tsaritsa and the Harbingers and why they are raging war against the Divine. But today, we're going to dive into a more microscopic topic that will focus on the future of the story rather than the past and the present. Will the Traveler ever join the Fatui Harbingers? This video is just pure speculation and theory and is not indicative of any final product. I will also be referring to Aether as a Traveler for consistency and personal bias. This video is also less on the lore side and more on the theorizing side about the future plotline of a chapter that will come in 4 years. I repeat, 4 years. Oh god. But nevertheless, let's answer the question. When considering the themes, motivations, and motifs of the Fatui Harbingers and the Saritsa, is it possible that the Traveler will join their ranks and become a Fatui Harbinger to help the Saritsa fight the Divine? To answer the question, yes. I believe that the Traveler will have a form of allegiance to the Fatui, or at least have their goals aligned with them and have the narrative motivation to do so. Besides, it'll make me owe you a lot of money if they sell the Harbingers. Let's not lie to ourselves. So let's entertain the idea that the Traveler will join the Fatui Harbingers as a final faction in Genshin Impact. If we were to be recruited into the Harbingers and brought them to the main story of Snezhnaya, I believe that Pulchinella will recruit us in the same way they recruited the Ajax into the 11th. This is because of the sneak preview in the trailer in which we get a glimpse of the playable characters in each region. Their introduction and our recruitment would show us how Pulchinella made Ajax into Tartalia, and I believe that's similar to how Diluc, Ningguang, and Ayaka play vital roles in their respective Archon quests, Pulchinella will also play their part. Which brings me to the Harbingers themselves. Because if Aether is put amongst their rank, there would be infighting and hostility especially since the structure itself is already quite brittle. Aether is openly hostile to the Balladeer, and if the fair lady returns, I doubt she will bury the hatchet, even for the Saritsa's sake. But perhaps the Traveler and the Saritsa's fools aren't as different as one thinks. When looking at the current Fatui Harbingers we know, we see that they and Aether share similar motivations in doing what they do. Both parties either have a strong connection to the Abyss, has fervent animosity towards a divine entity and the ignorant short-sighted gods that rule the land, seeks knowledge, power, and understanding of the world around them for the sake of pursuing the truth, was wronged by the circumstances of the world's foundational principles, and has a lack of true allegiance except loyalty. By no means are the Fatui Harbingers sympathetic characters, and whatever their motivations are will never excuse the atrocities that they have done to Taivat. But Aether in all regard can at least feel sympathy for the Theritsa's fools, especially since he himself has faced the injustices that they are fighting. I believe that similar to how Aether embodies the seven ideals of Teyvat, Aether also embodies the parallels between him and each of the currently known Harbingers. The Traveler mocks the ideals of the world by not playing by the restrictions of Teyvat. He has no vision but can wield the elements. He knows of the injustices of the Cataclysm and is aware that the monsters of the Abyss were once people that faced the divine wrath and punishment as well as he is trapped in Teyvat under the cruel foundational principles of the world because the sustainer of heavenly principles deemed him as an outlander. The traveler would have understood what a god's iron rule can do to the land as well as their greed. What pursuit of power and stealing from those destitute can do to a nation. Inazuma has taught him what happens when a god is blinded by their ideal to the point that they are stealing ambition and power despite having no real need for it. The Traveler is a transcendent being who roused himself from a nightmare-filled slumber placed upon him by the sustainer of heavenly principles, and even the gods dare not meddle in his fate, because none are qualified to be his judge. The Traveler is one who cleanses the sources of distortion, the short-sighted and ignorant gods, and the darkness and corruption of the Abyss. And lastly, he is unpredictable, and keeps other people guessing. But behind the innocent, childlike smile of the famed traveler lies a finely honed instrument of war. He shows his support and love for his family and friends through battle, 
and fighting and defending those he cares for. But here's the more important question. Why? Why will Aether consider joining the Fatui Harbingers? Well, firstly, the context of his journey across the previous Six Nations would have morphed his perception of Teyvat and the Heavenly Principles. We need to put into context that the further he continues his journey, the more he learns about the truth of the world. By his arrival to Snezhnaya, he would have at least gone through the ignorant sands of Sumeru's God of Wisdom, the guilty masquerade of Fontaine's God of Justice, and the secrets of Natlan's God of War, each chapter harboring a sense of insight that he didn't have when he first arrived to Teyvat. And we know that as time progresses, the Traveler becomes restless at how the Archons are dealing with their perverse ideas. It begins as far as Liyue, in which he and Paimon question Zhongli's decision to test the people even if it jeopardizes their safety, and follows through to Inazuma where he takes a direct opposition to the prospect of A's eternity. He is slowly changing because he realizes that power can corrupt, that even the gods are susceptible to being blinded by what they think is just. Wisdom, justice, and war are ideals that at some point would have morphed the Traveler's perceptions on Teyvat, leading him further into the harsh reality in which Teyvat's heavenly principles operate. Whether he likes it or not, having the final insight of the Saritza will open the truth to the Cataclysm, especially since it seems that Venti, Zhongli, and A don't seem to have any answers for him. The event 500 years ago was what made the Saritza change her perspective and personality therefore giving Aether a much more candid and harsh opinion on Celestia that the other gods may not be willing to give. And besides, the Saritza would have no reason to lie to the Traveler if they do share the same goals. So how will the chapter of Snezhnaya complete the tale of the Traveler's journey? The secrets of the God of War will be imparted to the Traveler and perhaps his perception of the Cataclysm a few years ago opened his eyes to the reality that Teyvat's foundational principles were born from bloodshed. Murata would tell him that seeking the guidance of the Saritsa is a necessity if he wishes to understand further, and begrudgingly, he agrees. The Traveler's journey would also have brought him more insight. The slow growth of resentment for Celestia begins. Perhaps it is time to seek those people who mock those above the sky. Audience with Isaritsa would not be easy. He has heard countless times her cold nature, but decides to hold on to Tartalia's promise that she was once a kindred soul, one whose heart was only hardened because of grief. He believes what Barbado said, and perhaps maybe understands why the Cataclysm could have changed her. 500 years is a long time. Whether by fate or fortune, he finds audience with the introduction of the fifth harbinger, Pulcinella, the rooster. But their meeting is tense, and the air is heavy as the harbinger shows apparent distaste for the famed traveler. Pulcinella is aware of the traveler's strength, and perhaps in this time, the traveler has even put an end to some of their comrades. The balladeer and the fair lady were once forces to be reckoned with, who have both inquired the traveler's ire in the nation of eternity. But that would only make the show more interesting. The traveler asks for audience with the Saritza, but the harbinger tells him that much like the original eleventh, he must prove his worth and start from the bottom. Whether it is through rigorous questioning or unending battle to prove the traveler's strength is up for fate to decide. But regardless of the means, the Traveler finds themselves in the palace. There, the Saritza makes it known that she has been quite interested in the Traveler's pursuits. She would have been aware of his journey through the prying eyes of the Fatui, and she would have been aware that his strength far surpasses the other Harbingers. She makes it known to those in the room that the difference in their strength is quite simple. The Traveler is not of this world. But she continues with grace and states that it is because of that she believes he is the final piece they need if they wish to win the game against the heavenly principles. The traveler would question her. Against the heavenly principles? The Saritza will only smile, 
and tell him that yes, her ultimate goal is to bring salvation to the land by rebelling against the heavenly principles directly. Through the amassment of powerful individuals who have been wronged by the deities above, she promises that she will burn away the sins of the old world and bring justice to those that have been wronged. The traveler is reminded of his sister, the people of Conria, and the cataclysm he witnessed 500 years ago. The unknown god who sealed him and his sister away. He remembers A's grief, John Lee's hesitance, and Venti's secrecy to the events of the cataclysm. And with a determined gaze, he asks, What were Celestia's heavenly principles? A laugh from the Harbingers is well earned, and perhaps the seniors amongst the crowd answer for the Saritza. Each of them would speak of the foundational principles Celestia forced the world to follow, lest they face divine judgment. But the Traveler notes that each of them speak with hostility. The Archon would extend a hand at him and offer an ultimatum. She knows of his power, and is aware that perhaps they are not so different. She understands what grief can do, and why if he lends her his power of the seven elements, she will show him the truth of the world as she sees it. Perhaps this is the key to his reunion with his sister, the end of the journey he needs to be by her side. Join the Saritza in the revolution against the divine, and he will understand why the gods are not to be trusted, why the city in the sky must fall if humanity wishes to truly be free. She offers him a mask and a loving smile.